the Israeli army's ground assault on the Gaza Strip has started. In his speech to the nation on October 28th, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu confirmed that the ground assault had been launched, calling the ongoing conflict with Hamas the Second War of Independence. The IDF is gradually advancing inside the Gaza Strip, encountering ambushes and hit-and-run tactics of Hamas. In this video, we shall describe the start of the IDF's ground assault in Gaza. This video is made possible thanks to the generous support of our YouTube members and patrons. Their contributions are the backbone of our work. As a token of our appreciation, our patrons and YouTube members enjoy two exclusive videos every week. Currently, they have access to a complete series on Xenophon's Anabasis, the First Punic War, History of Prussia, Italian Unification Wars, Risorgimento, and numerous other fun videos. Additionally, our Pacific War series is ongoing, and we're excited to announce the release of a new series on the Russo-Japanese War and Albigensian Crusades, and much more, exclusively for our backers. If you want to join this fantastic community, you can find the links in the video description and pinned comment. By becoming a patron or YouTube member, you'll gain access to exclusive videos, early access to all our public content, release schedules, wallpapers, and an invitation to our active Discord server, where we engage in lively discussions. Your support is invaluable, and we sincerely thank you for making our work possible. Standing alongside Netanyahu, the Defense Minister Yoav Gallant reiterated that the IDF has moved to a new phase of the war against Hamas after an intense bombing campaign of the Gaza Strip. The ground assault was launched on the evening of October 27th, after what the UN called the most intense Israeli airstrikes and artillery shelling in this war, while the internet and mobile phone communication in Gaza were cut off almost simultaneously with the start of the attack. The statement of the armed wing of Hamas, the Al-Qassam Brigades, from the first days of the invasion, claimed that they are confronting an Israeli ground incursion in Beit Hanun and East Barej, and violent engagements are taking place on the ground. The geolocated footage on social media corroborates this statement. There is a social media video depicting bulldozers destroying parts of the fence between Gaza and Israel, creating a path for Israeli vehicles to enter the northern part of the besieged territory. At this point, it looks like the Israeli columns are gradually advancing within the Gaza Strip in three directions, along the coast, through the Erez checkpoint towards Beit Hanun, and from the east near Berej. Both the IDF and Al-Qassam brigades have confirmed fighting around the Erez crossing. Their statements indicate that Hamas militants tried to ambush the IDF forces by emerging from an underground tunnel northwest of Beit Lahir. The Israeli army has also been advancing along the coast, on October 29th, a video on social media showed the soldiers of the 52nd Battalion of the 401st Brigade hanging the Israeli flag on a building in as -Siefa. They have since advanced on a Tatra on this axis. The Israelis have also captured northeastern Beit Hanun, advancing up to 3 kilometers deep from the border. The Israeli newspaper Haaretz reports that, in Beit Hanun, where reserve forces are operating, there are entire neighborhoods that have been completely flattened during the battles there. The available information on the eastern axis of the IDF assault shows that the 36th Division, the largest armored unit of the Israeli army, has entered Gaza near the village of Jehur ad -Dik. On October 30th, a video depicting an IDF tank striking a vehicle on Salah al-Din Road was shared on social media. This is the main road connecting the Gaza Strip, and obviously a vital communication route. The IDF has established control over part of this road, and advanced all the way to the coastline, effectively cutting the Gaza Strip into two disconnected areas, after capturing part of the Al Rashid Road as well. As early as November 1st, we started seeing footage of battles in the southern outskirts of Gaza City. The Israeli advance in central Gaza took place along the number 10 road, and they control a relatively narrow strip of land, which makes it susceptible to attacks from both the north and the south. To offset this disadvantage, the IDF has built six strong points along the occupied strip, according to the analysis of the open source satellite images by OSINT Technical on Twitter. These strong points have been built by D9 bulldozers and consist of revetments and dirt berms. But the Israeli army is facing heavy resistance. Hamas is using hit-and-run tactics to slow down the IDF advance, and to exact a high cost for their ground assault. The exact number of IDF losses is unknown, but we have already seen videos of damaged or destroyed Israeli equipment, tanks and vehicles. 
These videos demonstrate that the IDF armoured vehicles are often not accompanied by infantry, which is most probably done to decrease losses from Hamas ambushes. Israel is attempting to offset its disadvantages by relying heavily on airstrikes. Heavy fighting is awaiting both sides, as even according to most modest estimates, it will take months before Israel will manage to occupy the whole Gaza Strip and defeat Hamas. So, how can we interpret the information we have so far? It is clear that contrary to the expectations of many commentators, the IDF has not launched a mass ground assault from many directions, but has instead opted for a gradual advance, most probably to limit its losses. Their progress in northern Gaza has been minor, and so far the IDF's most significant achievement has been the capture of the main communication lines in central Gaza, putting Gaza City under encirclement. Israeli military analysts have been using the term gradualism to describe the military operation in the Gaza Strip. According to a former official of Israel's National Security Council, Yoel Gazansky, so far, the IDF has deployed its elite units to clean out the area from booby traps and improvised explosives, and in general, to create conditions for the deployment of a larger number of troops. Israeli researcher Kobe Michael argues that the current phase of IDF operations is carried out to pave the way for the third phase of the war, the massive land incursion. What about Hamas? The fighting near the Erez crossing and videos of destroyed Israeli equipment and vehicles indicate that Hamas will try to inflict as much damage as possible on the IDF whenever opportunities arise, by mostly resorting to guerrilla tactics. Hamas simply does not have enough militants to fight the IDF in a conventional manner. They are disadvantaged technologically and will be fighting a defensive guerrilla war using the advantages it has. One advantage at their disposal is underground tunnels, which we discussed in our previous video. They have already been used to attempt an ambush of the Israeli troops near the Erez crossing. We have seen footage of Hamas militants attacking the IDF armored vehicles with grenades and then striking anti-tank guns to ensure their destruction. According to Israeli sources, Hamas has been using its tunnel network to conduct these hit-and-run attacks. We have also seen the Russo-Ukrainian war tactic of drones dropping explosives on armoured vehicles used by Hamas. The more the Israeli army advances into the urban area, the more targets Hamas will have to shoot at. On the one hand, Hamas does not seem to prevent the Israelis' progress on the ground, but on the other hand, we have seen no indication that the Hamas command and control have been devastated by the IDF ground assault. So far, we have not seen the IDF fighting inside tunnels. A former Israeli Prime Minister, Naftali Bennett, called on the IDF to suffocate Hamas operatives in their tunnels, without elaborating on what exactly that means. Kobe Michael argues that the IDF should not fight in the tunnels at this point, but find a way to destroy them from above. The Israeli Defense Minister Gallant has claimed that the IDF has unique solutions for Hamas tunnels, also offering no further explanation. The upcoming days and weeks will show what Israel plans to do regarding the tunnel network. Western capitals and Middle Eastern cities continue hosting large pro-Palestinian rallies due to the heavy civilian death toll caused by the Israeli airstrikes. The rhetoric of the Israeli officials, including one call to launch a nuclear bomb on Gaza, has further diverted the international sympathies towards Palestinians. Despite this, the US government still maintains its pro-Israeli position and has vowed to protect Israel on numerous occasions. Pro-Hamas forces in the Middle East see the United States as a foe and have used the stance of the Biden administration as a cause to attack American military personnel and infrastructure in the Middle East. On October 31st, Pentagon Press Secretary Pat Ryder said that the US forces in Iraq and Syria had been attacked with drones or rockets at least 27 times in recent days. And while the US has sided with Israel, it has also warned Israel against worsening a humanitarian disaster in Gaza. The Secretary of State, Blinken, has called on Israel to allow more aid to reach Gaza and stressed the importance of the release of hostages, which is far from being the main priority for the Netanyahu government. The US government has been pushing for, at least, some pauses in the fighting to mitigate the gravity of the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza. Diplomatic sources have also been reporting about a Hamas proposal to release 50 civilian hostages for a five-day ceasefire in which apparently the Israeli government has shown no interest. Israel continues to be concerned about the potential second front against it in the north from Hezbollah, 
The low-level conflict ongoing on the Israeli-Lebanese border since October has caused casualties on both sides, but so far has not escalated further. On November 3rd, the Hezbollah leader, Hassan Nasrallah, made a much-anticipated speech, in which he unsurprisingly accused Israel, the USA and the West in general for the ongoing war, praised Hamas, denied Iran's involvement in the October 7th attack, and criticized the Arabic states for their inaction. But most importantly, he did not commit to starting a full-scale war against Israel, instead claiming that they have been at war since October 8th. Hezbollah remains cautious for now, but this may change if they feel that a full-scale war would sufficiently alter the situation. But this does not mean that the potential for the spillover of the war in Gaza to the rest of the Middle East has disappeared. On the contrary, the declaration of war by the Houthis on Israel and their aerial attacks on American forces in the region, along with the largely symbolic but nevertheless notable vote of the Algerian parliament allowing the president to send in troops to fight Israel, indicate that the ongoing war has a major potential to escalate. Furthermore, Jordan has warned Israel that any displacement of Palestinians from Gaza or the West Bank would be a declaration of war. Netanyahu has downplayed a document from the Israeli government on the displacement of Palestinians from Gaza to the Sinai Peninsula leaked by the Israeli media, and called it a hypothetical paper. Still, by saying this, he acknowledged the document's authenticity, which shows that, at the very least, this plan is being discussed among the Israeli leadership. Statements of Israeli officials deepen these concerns significantly. So far, the Israeli Defense Force has employed a gradual approach to advance along the coastline slowly and to cut the central road of the Gaza Strip, encircling Gaza City. At some point, this will presumably pave the way for a larger assault of the IDF to achieve the stated goal of destruction of Hamas and the occupation of the Gaza Strip. In this period, Israeli air attacks continued. And according to various sources, more than 10,000 people have died in Gaza, the vast majority of them civilians, around half of them children. There are water and electricity shortages in the besieged region, and according to The Economist, over a tenth of Gaza's housing infrastructure has been destroyed. The humanitarian disaster in Gaza will likely only worsen, and the ongoing war increasingly seems like a powder keg which may blow up in the face of the whole region. More videos on this conflict are on the way, so make sure you are subscribed and press the bell button. Please consider liking, subscribing, commenting and sharing, it helps immensely. Recently we have started releasing weekly patron and YouTube member exclusive content. Consider joining their ranks via the link in the description or button under the video to watch these weekly videos, learn about our schedule, get early access to our videos, access our private discord and much more. This is the Kings and Generals channel and we will catch you on the next one.